Hey everyone, Ellery the Health Adventure here, and I just received a shipment. I've got some new herbs that I'm going to be trying. So I bought these from Dr. Robert Morse. Um, Dr. Robert Morse is somebody that I've been following um, quite frequently, just listening to all of his theories and that sort of thing. Um, so I actually I got some of his herbs because I've been following some of the protocols that he recommends and it's been working for me. So I thought, why not try some of his herbs? Um, if you saw my last video, um, I was talking a lot about um, you know how I believe that candida is actually at the root of a lot of my issues. Um, I have been dealing with um, symptoms uh, related to lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, scleroderma, and um, what I have found is that every single time I eat vegetables, um, my hands, my rheumatoid arth arthritis in my hands gets flared up. And preceding that, sometimes I notice that I have some candida-like symptoms, so itching, bloating, um, you know, all the kinds of things that are related to candida. So I thought I would go ahead. I've been actually I've been using some uh, some herbs for candida on my own, um, particularly olive leaf extract. Every now and again, I use oregano oil. Um, you know, for example. Like if I've noticed I have some symptoms at night and I've already brushed my teeth and I don't want to have to, you know, brush off the glycerin that's in my olive leaf extract, then I'm like, okay, I'm going to just do some water mixed with some oregano oil just to kind of take care of that acute symptom. So, um, so yeah, I decided to buy some Dr. Robert Morris herbs. He has a lot of really good, valuable information about the lymphatic system. And, um, you know, to me, it makes a lot of sense. It's a more holistic view of how the body works. And um, I've actually done some research a little bit on, um, you know, for example, lupus. Um, what they found, they found there's some, I don't know if it's like an enzyme or something in rats that when that thing is missing, that, that it creates lupus-like symptoms. And it sounded like it was something in the lymphatic system, something that cannot um, get rid of uh, met, like met, uh, metabolic waste and other kinds of waste in the body. So, and the lymphatic system basically is your body's sewer system. So that's according to Dr. Robert Morris. You know, that's that's what he talks about all the time. So if you can't eliminate uh, the toxins, or if you're struggling with eliminating the toxins because you're just overloaded with them, it makes sense that you know that you might get some sort of autoimmune problem. As also, additionally, I was reading um, some things, some, some theories from uh, Dr. Amy Meyer. Um, she's also she's a, a holistic medicine um, naturopathic doctor, and she also talks about how candida is oftentimes the underlying problem for many autoimmune disorders. So, I don't really have anything to lose here in trying these these uh, different herbs. So I went ahead and I bought this is called Parasite M. So let me see if I can get the camera to focus a little bit on this. But um, this is one of the herbs I got from Dr. Robert Morse. And um, it actually, his, his herbs came with this nice little packet here um, that just describes basically all the ingredients that are in all of his different herbs, not just the ones I got, but all the other ones that he has on his website. And then it just it tells you, you know, what they're kind of used for, the different ones, uh, what they're used for. So it's a, it's a kind of a nice little packet to have uh, now that I bought these. Um, but this one, this Parasite M, this does have some olive leaf extract in it. Um, it also has some other things in it. So I'm, I'm curious to see if by taking this particular herb, if this helps my candida even more, to, or well, helps get rid of it more um, in comparison to what I've already been doing with the olive leaf extract and occasionally the oregano oil. So I just thought I would try something a little bit different. So this has, um, you can see it's got some the ingredient list on here. And again, sorry if my camera is not really focusing very well on this. Um, I'll just read it to you. It has pau de arco bark, black walnut hull, cat's claw bark, golden seal root, usnea lichen, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, olive leaf extract, thyme leaf, butternut bark, and barberry root. So I haven't done, I'll be honest with you, I haven't done like a ton of research on any of those other herbs that are in this. 
Um, there's so many herbs out there, it's hard to really keep track of them all. But, you know, again, because I've tried some of these things that Dr. Robert Morris has been recommending and it's working for me, I'm just kind of taking a chance and, and trusting that these are going to hopefully work for me. And if they don't, you know, it's not a big deal. I'm just I'm just giving this a shot just to see, you know, if, if, if this does it for me. So, so that's the one herb. And then the other one that I got was a kidney and bladder tonic. And I got this for a couple reasons. Number one, because um, this is, I'll, I'll show you a little close up here, kidney and bladder tonic. Um, the, the number one reason I got it was because uh, if you are a health club member, um, that's how you basically order these herbs. You have to become a health club member on Dr. Robert Morse's website. Um, and then, you know, it's, it's actually, it ends up being free. You sign up, it's, it's supposed to be like a $10 fee, but then you get an email right away. Um, that gives you $10 off coupon and then it's it's a free membership so um, so after becoming a member you can access all of the different herbs on his site and so uh, when I was looking up the Parasite M herb um, in the description it does say that they do re highly recommend that you also take it with the kidney and bladder tonic um, and I was just checking some of his other herbs out and they don't all say that um, so it seemed to me that maybe it is a good idea just to you know follow that recommendation so I went ahead and I bought the kidney and bladder tonic. Uh, the other reason I want to try taking this as well is because um, I used to take a, a proton pump inhibitor for seven years. It was it was called Nexium, and Nexium is known to cause things like kidney failure and a lot of issues regarding the kidney. Um, and that medication is only supposed to be taken for four to eight weeks now. So that was something that wasn't disclosed initially when that medication was first released. And I was on it for such a long time that I can only imagine that maybe my kidneys got a little bit weakened. I don't know. It's, it's definitely a possibility. So, um, you know, considering some of the issues I have, I wouldn't be surprised um, especially things like I've, I've had a doctor tell me that like my bones are really uh, have a low bone density and that he, he even said something really insulting and said like that you have the bones of a 50 year old that's not something you really the way that that was said could have been said a little bit better um, in my opinion but basically what he was trying to say was that my bone density is really bad and that's something that can also be caused by Nexium. Um, so I'm basically trying to approach this, you know, my medical situation in a much different way than what I used to do because what I used to do caused so many other issues that, you know, moving forward, um, you know, in my life, I really want to try to take as much of a natural approach as possible. Um, so that's why I'm doing some of these herbal remedies and things like that. Um, you know, just based on my past experiences. So, and I, I definitely don't think it hurts to try taking a, a kidney herb. And again, if, if it doesn't work out for me, if I notice, you know, bad side effects or something like that, if I feel like I, you know, it's not working for me, then I can always just stop taking it. It's not a really a big deal. Um, but it does have in it, I'll read to you the ingredients again. This has dandelion leaf, corn silk, juniper berry, goldenrod leaf, couch grass root, parsley leaf, uh, horsetail herb, stinging nettle leaf, and cordyceps. So um, I did watch, I think there was a video by master herbalist Patrick Delves on YouTube. He's a little eccentric and he can be a little, uh, honestly, he's kind of hard to understand. Sometimes he's got a strong accent and, you know, he's, he's, very, he's very high energy. So sometimes it can be hard to take in what he's saying. Um, but uh, one of the things he did say on one of his videos regarding a uh, kidney cleanse was you don't want to take juniper berry too long if you're going to um, work with the kidneys. Um, his opinion is also that dandelion leaf, because it has potassium in it, is not good to take for the kidneys necessarily if you're having kidney issues. Um, but it is more of like a nutritive, um, this is supposed to be more like a nutritive herb. So. I don't know. I'll give it a shot. Like I said, if I have any, if I notice any bad side effects or something like that, I can always stop. But um, what I've read on some of the reviews that with people who have taken this uh, on Dr. Robert Morse's site, um, they seem to notice more kidney filtration. So what does that mean, kidney filtration? So um, when you start eating a lot of fruit like I've been doing, you might notice, <laughs> um, you know, because I've been really eating nothing but fruit, um, you might notice some different things in your urine that you're not used to seeing that might initially cause alarm. Um, but, you know, 
according to the people that have done this before, it's not an issue. And I haven't, again, I've noticed nothing but improvement, um, you know, minus be, having to be careful with my teeth, you know, with eating a lot of fruit. Um, but my whole body, um, I've definitely noticed a lot of improvement since eating um, just nothing but fruit. And again, this is kind of like a cleanse, you know, I can always add other things later, but right now this is all my body seems to be able to handle to function properly. So um, what I noticed when I started eating a lot of fruit was that I had uh, what's called mucus threads in my urine. And basically, according to Dr. Robert Morris, what's happening is you're cleaning out the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is basically, it makes up a big portion of your body's fluids. It's not just blood that's an important fluid. It's also your lymphatic fluid, which is um, your body's sewer system. So if you've got a lot of backup because you haven't been filtering things out, maybe your kidneys have been down, um, kidneys are a big filtering organ, then you know you might start seeing in your urine some things that you wouldn't normally that maybe you know according to like mainstream medicine would be like an alarm oh my gosh you have foam in your urine or or you have some other you know mucus threads maybe that means you have an infection um or something like that but really um if you're doing like a cleanse you know for me what i've noticed is that i've seen these things kind of on and off so like for the first two weeks i actually didn't see any of these kinds of things in my urine on the other hand, um, and this could have something to do with the strength of my kidneys. On the other hand, my boyfriend, for example, um, he has been eating a lot of stuff that has been causing him mucus, and lately he's been eating a little bit better. So when he eats better, or well, I guess when he eats cleaner, you know, more fruits and vegetables, um, then basically he notices like right away he gets mucus threads in his urine. So it's different for everybody, um, but for me it took two weeks for me to see that. And then, you know, that happened for a little while, maybe a week or two, and then it stopped. And then maybe one day I'll notice I have some foam in my urine, and then it goes away. So it's just, it's, I've just noticed that it's not like a constant thing. It's nothing that's like, you know, getting much, much worse, or it's just something that kind of is coming and going. Um, so I'm just kind of going with the flow with it and just, just you know, trusting, trusting that the path will take me where I need to go, um, basically. So... I'm excited to take these and try these. I want to, the reason I only got two, because I know like Dr. Robert Morris has like, he's got some big detoxification protocol um, uh, packs, I guess, that he puts together um, that are good to take. You know, to, he calls, one of them is uh, the Fab Four, so that's for the kidneys, uh, the endocrine system, so adrenal glands and things like that. A lot of us have weak adrenal glands um, just from our high stress lifestyles. Um, the GI, uh, not GI broom, um, he's got a stomach and ball formula. GI broom is like a stronger one than stomach and ball. And then he's got another formula, I can't remember what the last one, I don't know if, I don't think it was liver, I think it was something else. But he's got four that go together, um, that he recommends to at least have, like, as a basis for, like, cleaning out your system. But what I wanted to do was just, you know, try, you know, a couple, like, Parasite M, you know, like, I know I'm pretty much dealing with Candida, so I, I'm gonna, I'm trusting that Parasite M is gonna be a good one to take, and he does put that, he does include that in some of his bigger package, um, detoxification protocols, because most of us have some sort of parasites or yeast overgrowth or something like that. And then I just wanted to see how my body reacts to his herbs in general. So I just went ahead and just got two. I didn't want to go too crazy um, just to start. And, you know, if these work well for me, I, I'll definitely, of course, I'm going to keep you guys updated on what, what is working for me, what's not. But if these do work well for me and I find that, then, you know, I might get a couple more and then I'll do a bigger, a bigger thing. Um, but they are kind of expensive. Um, I'm curious to see, for example, like if the Parasite M herb, um, if that, how that compares to taking olive leaf extract or how it compares to taking um, oregano oil. I find that the oregano oil is stronger, but it is recommended not to take the oregano oil too long because it can put a little bit of a stress to the liver. So I try not to take that one too much. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see, you know, if how these how these do. Um, what's one thing that I notice is that um, you know some people find that if they take some of these herbs, they might get itchy or something like that. For oh, the lymphatic herb that's the one that that's the other one in the Fab Four. It, it's not liver; it's the lymphatic herb. So it's it's pulling stuff from the, the lymph system. Some people will notice maybe they get itchy or something like this when they take it like that herb, and 
that actually can be candida just kind of moving around when you're taking that. So it is really hard to know what is what is detox and what is what I call retox. You know, what? how do you know if something's helping you or hurting you? So it's it's really up in the air because of course there's not there's not a lot of studies that that show um, what works with natural um, natural treatments and that sort of thing. Most of the money is unfortunately in this you know it's a whole other discussion, but most of it is in these other um, you know pharmaceutical things where they're creating patents and whatnot. You can't really create a patent so much for herbs, so. Eh, yeah, that's it's, it's a tricky one. But you know, for me, like I said, what I have found is, for example, you know, my my past experience with mainstream medical isn't really too positive. You know, I had a lot of kind of negative effects. Um, you know, I believe from from Nexium and that sort of thing. And I, I tend to be the the kind of person that I I don't necessarily believe in taking a lot of pharmaceutically man-made things. Um, so I try to stick to what's most natural as much as possible. Um, so I'm just going on this path and trusting what my experience and, and listening to my body as much as possible. And I, like I said, I noticed obviously the biggest thing for me is my hands working. So um, my hands were closing up a lot on me before I started eating nothing but fruit. And that's the biggest indicator to me that this is at least a very good, at the very least, a very good cleanse. So I'm just sticking with that. And it is true, you know, the more the more you research too, the more you'll find um, like for example, you know, fruits have a lot of antioxidants. So that you can't. We all know that fruits have antioxidants. They pull out free radicals. They pull out crap. That's just what fruits do. So it makes sense to me that eating a lot of things that are high in antioxidants and high in vitamins and minerals would be doing nothing but service to your body. Now, of course, I understand. Like a lot of people are concerned about, for example, lack of protein and that sort of thing. Um, so, you know, I'm definitely open to possibly incorporating maybe even um, some raw fish or something like that, you know, to get some protein if I need it. Um, you know, but for right now, because everything that I take in is kind of a risk for my body, uh, because anything I take in could impact my hands and make my hands not work. So it's always kind of scary. Even the herbs, I, I have to see if those are going to work for me or not. You know, if, if all of a sudden they impact my hands negatively, I'm not going to want to take them anymore. So that's just something I'm going to keep an eye out for because, again, like I need to have my hands working. Like it's really important and it's very scary when they're not. So um, for me to try fish, for example, if that sets me back, you know, that's that's like that's kind of not fun to, to have to deal with that. So, you know, trying different things that besides, obviously I know fruit works for me. Um, I found out that vegetables really don't work very well for me, at least right now. Um, you know, trying something else is, is again, it's another risk for me to take. So, um, but you know, it's, it's all about weighing out the risk too, you know, cause for example, if, if I did some, you know, let's say I was doing this for a couple years or something and, and I got some blood tests and it was showing my protein was really low and maybe I was craving some protein or something like that, then yeah, then it might make sense to try and, and do that, you know, but not that I'll wait that long, you know, so it's, it's just, it's a process. The whole thing is a journey and it's not, it's definitely not black and white. There's a lot of gray areas. So it's kind of up to ourselves to figure out what's best for us. So, I don't know, I kind of went on a little bit of a tangent, but uh, yeah, that's, that's basically what I'm going through though, you know, with my, with, with dealing with, you know, symptoms of lupus and rheumatoid arthritis, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, it's, it's not an easy journey, but, um, but we do what we can, right? So, and I think it's best, I think it's really great, you know, if we can become kind of our own um, you know, this is what I like about Dr. Robert Morse is like he really encourages us to become our own healers and to to become our own researchers and learning learning enough so that we know how to take care of our own bodies, right? Because, you know, there's a lot of people that, you know, they might know a lot, a lot, a lot about how their car works and that's really great because then, you know, you know if you're going to the mechanic whether or not the mechanic is being honest or not, right? But a lot of us don't really know how our bodies work. And it seems like important that we all really know how our bodies work because we need to know how to take care of it. This, this is our, this is our vessel. You know, this is what we need to work throughout the day and to do, you know, to do what we do and to live life and to enjoy life. 
So that's why health is so important to me and that's why I'm really, really focused on doing as much research as I possibly can, you know, without driving myself too crazy, right? But, you know, doing as much research and, and some experimentation a little bit because I want to know what works for my body. And, uh, you know, I, th I think that's re a really good thing to do is to really, you know, get in tune, focus on your body, you know, do some meditation, start to learn to listen to your body because the mind can take us in so many, so many different places. Uh, you know, we can get really analytical and stuck in, you know, statistics and studies and blah, 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 blah. But unfortunately, a lot of those kinds of like the clinical studies and this and that, they can be kind of taken out of context because, you know, a clinical trial that shows that a medication works in comparison to placebo may not also be being compared to something like a natural remedy. So you have to keep those kinds of things in mind. So again, that's why I'm going to try some of these and see, you know, see how they work for me. So, and again, if they don't, I'll just go back to what I was doing and just eat my fruit and take my olive leaf extract. So, all right, you guys, um, I think I'll end it there for now for today. I could go on and on and on, but I don't want to get too off topic here. Uh, maybe I'll make another video talking about some of those other things. But anyway, um, it was great uh, doing my little periscope again today. Um, I'll be back to let you know how my herbs are working for me or not. I'll let you know. I, I hope they work. I, I'm, I've heard good things about the Dr. Robert Morris herbs. I've heard they're pretty, you know, they're strong but gentle. That's that's what I've heard about them. So I'll, uh, I'll give you guys the update once I do that. So once again, my name is Ellery, and you can check out, um, I haven't posted too many new blogs or anything lately, but I've got my website, thehealthadventure.com, if you want to see some things there. Um, and I'll see you guys later. All right, have a good one. Bye-bye.